Mm. You can swallow. Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. Today we're going to talk about port wine. You know, it took me a long time to get into ports, but Shireen loved them from when she was a tiny little girl. <laughs> so, port wine and I go a long way back. In fact, it was what started me into liking wine. I was really young when I had my first sip of wine and was, so that was pot. I think it was either a 20 year or 10 year tawny pot um, from Graham and my grandfather gave it to me. Kind of thought, I think I, at that point he thought that it was a bit of a joke like ha ah, you know like little kid tasting wine but I actually loved it. You know it tasted, I remember very clearly I thought it tasted like cho either chocolate cake or brownie and I actually asked for more after that. And from that point onwards, I like if given a choice, I would always want pot over over chocolate cake or any sort of dessert. So I was really pretty young. I think I was like six or seven. From then on, I really loved the the taste and the smell of wine because it's so it's so profound. It's so layered. I want to show you something. See if you remember this. You can pick it up. I was so happy. Oh, because I cried. It was almost like a dream come true for me because, you know, I've always loved Port, and that wasn't our first visit to Porto, but that was like a real, real extensive visit. You know, Port's really a historic wine, you know, one of the oldest demarcated wines in the world. These strong red wines from the Duro from Portugal, they were fortified with spirits to survive the long journey up to the UK by ship. And thus, Port wine was born. When it comes down to Port, there are two really main styles you're going to see more either a tawny oxidative style or a ruby style. There are rosés and whites, but they're they're very rare. On the tawny side, you're gonna see ones that say tawny or 10, 20, 30, 40 year old tawny or even cojita. The numbers are not the age. <laughs> they're blended to taste like if tawny was that old. Tawny ports see a long time in the barrel, so they become oxidative, kind of golden in color, the nutty toffee, caramel type flavors. For ruby ports, you're gonna see everything from the cheapest kind of port that just says ruby up to reserve, and then finally the late bottle vintage, crusted, uh, single quinta vintage, and then finally the granddaddy of them all, vintage port. These are deep, dark in color, full of fruit, full of tannins, full of flavor, alcohol, mm, mm, mm. So Neeport was kind enough to send a variety of different ports for this style of video. I'm cracking them open with my Coravin Model 6, which is very useful for drinking port. Uh, I have a discount code in the description box. I'll put, you'll see that below. You can get 10% off using that code. The Neeport 10 year old white. White port made from obviously the white grapes in the Duro, blended to age to feel like it's a 10 year old type of wine. Surprising because to me, um, this leans towards less of the, the black fruit quality. And the first thing that comes out to me is actually a bit of this floral quality, a bit more herbal. And citrus actually. Such a beautiful color. If you look at it, you would think that's orange wine or amber or macerated wine. A little bit more lighter on the palette. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Like I to summarize, this is more towards the floral, the herbal, the lighter fruit, citrus, even more of this dried peachy, apricotness kind of wine. Next we have the Neeport Colhita 1997. This is a tawny port, but this is from a single vintage, from the 1997 vintage, aged in the barrel for a long, long, long time, and then bottled. Uh, Colhita ports are fantastic wines, and they can really be some phenomenal values in the world of fine wine. 
I love Kokita by the way because Kokita leans towards the tawny side instead of the ruby side and I tend to like the tawny style you know with more like toffee or nutty uh, caramel sort of thing and I love Kokita because it gives me all of that plus a very good price <laughs> Yep, so this is coming on as like more of this um, burnt caramel immediately. Spicy, really spicy, a bit more of this like allspice, peppery kind of smell. So the spice comes towards as like a little bit earthy, a little bit warm, a little bit spicy, also a little bit sweet. Mmm. You can swallow. Oh wow, this Ampella is really long and it's got a very nice, again, this um, herbal quality to it kind of reminds me right i grew up with tcm which is um traditional chinese um, medicine which i actually really enjoy it because there are lots of different herbs that i get to learn about and that has that herbal like herbal soup quality on the finish a little bit a little bit bitter but yet contrast with sweetness mm. and so long really long i can still taste it so much wow beautiful wine. We have the knee port crusted port. They're made to be baby vintage ports at a fraction of the cost. They're a blend of multiple vintages, uh, unfined, unfiltered, so they throw a little bit of sediment. That's why they say crusted. Uh, they put the, when you see the vintage on them, that's the vintage they were actually bottled. Mm, yep, towards the ruby style. Now this, you get the black fruit, like a forest berry. Um, luscious fruit quality on the nose. I think if you dig a little bit deeper on second sniff, you can actually still get this very nice violet quality. And I love, 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 love violet in vintage and ruby pot. Mm -hmm. Now this has tannins. Oh, I love the tannins. The tannins make me go and it's so nice. It's like sucking on a lollipop because it's a little bit dry, but yet very sweet at the same time. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm, so good. Really, again, long, long end palette. Next, we have the granddaddy of them all. Vintage ports are declared by the whole organization that regulates port. Uh, so 2015 was declared a great vintage. That's why you see a lot of producers come up with vintage ports. These ports are aged in wood for two years, then put in a bottle, and they can be, they can be put in a cellar for decades, sometimes even centuries. The vintage pot is not too far from the crusted pot in terms of the nose, but with a lot more intensity, a lot more vibrant, and probably, you know, more, more nuances to it as well. But no, fresh away. Now I get this blueberry on top of this black fruit quality. It smells almost like typical red of wine actually from, from the Doro. But again, much more intensity. I can smell this all day, all night, really. Sometimes I think I love smelling pot more than I like to drink it. Or I like the aftertaste. Like, I don't like the act of like tasting and swallowing it. I like like the before and after. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Now you can feel this tannins kind of like close with a little bit of a punch in your mouth. But again, it's so balanced by sweetness that it doesn't stick. It's not the astringency is there, it's firm, it's still in the mouth, but it doesn't sit heavy. Like it's firm, but it's not too astringent sort of thing, which is something that you don't get a lot unless you're having like great, great fine red wine. The Get Fire. Niport is the only producer to make this style of port. It's kind of almost like a blend almost between a vintage a ruby and a tawny. It's made initially in a vintage style and then it's transferred from oak casks into big glass balloons or demijohns. 8 to 11 liters where it stays for years before it's bottled. Super rare, super wonderful and super enjoyable. So, <laughs> this is my first taste of Garofira. Interesting, it really it really smells like um, a vintage pot, an old vintage pot, but it's so elegant. It, it, it almost feels like it's whimsical. It kind of just floats very lightly across your nose. Oh, this feels like a very nice action. <laughs> but this is exactly what the, what the wine is doing to me. It just like glides across my nose. 
Wow, this is so complex. Now this is like a mix of like pot vintage pot with with the tawny pot quality with the aging. Mm, you get more of this um, woodsy kind of quality to it. Savory, you know, a little bit of like I would say um, a bit of this barbecue meat. But yet, of course, you have your dry red cherry, cranberry, pepper, lots of black pepper. Silky soft, really glides across the palette. And I find that this front palette is a lot more heavier in a good way, like it's got more intensity on the front palette. It's really elegant, it feels a little bit leaner on the palette sort of thing. Very structured as well. The Just slightly before the mid palette over here, you feel a little just mouth puckering thing. And then it just finishes beautifully, tenons are resolved, and then it sends this really nice warm sensation down my throat. I can't. <laughs> I'm just dreaming right now. <laughs> oh wow. Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.